What does it mean to stretch your back? The common way people stretch their back is like this. They push their midsection very far forward, sometimes raising and retracting their arms, and maybe turning their face upward. You'll see this kind of pose done frequently by dancers and people doing yoga, and perhaps we're supposed to marvel at the flexibility. But this stretch is also done by your average person to bring a sort of feeling of relief. But is this really a good stretch of the back? What is the goal of a stretch? Does this stretch, which may very well feel good in the moment, actually make sense? If you follow this channel, you have likely already noticed some problems with this stretch. Why would we want to shove our midsection forward? Nearly everyone in the modern world already habitually pushes their midsection forward, which bends and hollows the back and causes a protruding abdomen. Why would we want to go further into our habit and bend our back more extremely? This is a kind of stretch, though. By releasing the tension in a number of muscles and contorting the back, you will pull a number of muscles into length. At the same time, you will be shortening other muscles and making them more tense. Is that what we want? We'll come back to this question of what is the purpose of a stretch. But it might sound funny to you that such a natural-seeming stretch could be wrong. But if you think about it, why wouldn't it be wrong? Does your average person sit with good posture? Or walk with good posture? Can your average person stand for even a minute without twisting up their legs or straining themselves? The feeling sense of modern people is very much accustomed to bad, shortened posture. So why would our feeling sense be capable of guiding us to an appropriate stretch? If this forward bend of the back is going deeper into your habit, then what? Do we want to do the opposite? The opposite would be a massive rounding of the back. That too is in line with some people's habits, in particular when sitting down. However, this stretch suffers from many of the same problems that the opposite stretch does. By bending the spine, you are reducing the distance between the rib cage and the pelvis. Most people can easily push themselves between these two extremes, which I would say are both shortening gestures. Both will cause certain muscles to be released and lengthened, while others are shortened and tensed up. So what is the point of a stretch? Some might say it's simply to release and lengthen certain muscles. I don't think that's right, but even if it was, you certainly wouldn't want a stretch that goes deeper into your habit. You wouldn't want to release muscles that you already habitually release. People imagine that this pulling back of the shoulders and retraction of the head counters their common habits, but this is a total misconception. Nearly all people keep their head and shoulders pulled too far back all the time, which narrows the shoulder blades and shortens the neck. The feeling of stretch that accompanies this gesture is the sting of going even deeper into your habit than you usually would. It is beyond what you'd normally do, so you feel that, but that feeling is not an indication of any benefit. What if the point of a stretch was twofold? One, to lengthen the muscles while they're engaged, which is different from lengthening the muscles while they're released, and two, to lengthen the fascia of the body. On the first point, many people think of a stretch as taking an overly shortened and tight muscle and releasing it into length. But that sets you up to move between two modes with the muscle, tight and short, and released and long. You will never be getting the thing that you actually want, which is to have due tension and length in the muscle. It's easy to go through extremes, just like it's easy to go into a big arch or a big slump with our back. But how do we get to this other thing that is neither extreme? The thing that is present in a genuine stretch, but which is not present in either of these extremes, is lengthening of the fascia. The only way to lengthen your fascia is with specific intentional coordinated movements. What we're looking for is not just a simple middle ground between these two undesirable extremes. We're looking for something that is not in your habitual range of movement. A genuine stretch will not feel like the dull sting of these extreme gestures. It will be much odder feeling than that. It also will not be easy. It will not just be a massive release forward or backwards. And it will not shorten the major fascial structures of the body and make them limp. 
So let's reason this out because it's really not all that complicated. If we want to stretch the back and front of the torso, the rib cage will have to move up away from the pelvis. If we do the typical back stretch, we will lift the lower part of the rib cage and stretch part of the front of the body, but we will lower the top end of the rib cage and shorten the back. If we do the opposite slump stretch, we'll have the same problem, or worse, bring both ends of the rib cage down in space. However, if we move the lower end of the rib cage back and up, and the top end of the rib cage forward and up, we can stretch the front and back of the torso. We can also include the pelvis, because a typical back stretch will cause people to push their pelvis even further forward than is habitual, while dumping the front end of the pelvis down and lifting the lower back portion. We can do the opposite, and lift the front of the pelvis back and up, move the pelvis back in space, and keep the back of the pelvis down. This coordinated set of movements will pull the back in two directions, and in doing so pull the thoracolumbar fascia in two directions. This is a genuine stretch. There is no release in order to get an exaggerated relaxed lengthening. There is coordinated engagement of the musculature, which lengthens the entire torso. Again, we come back to this idea of using our ability to reason. The next time you get up from having slumped in a chair, you have a choice to make when you want to stretch your back. You can do what feels familiar and go deeper into your postural habits, or you can stop for a moment, plan out your stretch, and coordinate a set of movements that go completely against your typical habits. And in the end, that is the real goal of a stretch, is it not? To go against your habits of movement? To go out of your typical range of motion? Do you really think you're going to do that by doing a mindless stretch like this? Are you sure this is genuinely stretching you just because it gives you a pleasant feeling for a moment? Is this flexibility to go super deep into your habit a good thing? Or could there be something better for your back and your posture? Something that's not as easy, but which genuinely goes against your habits? Something that requires a little thought? My point is not that you should never do these common stretches. But it's worth asking, are you able to choose to stretch in a different way? When your back is out of whack because you had to do some work in the yard or you sat down for too long, do you have a choice about how you stretch your back to deal with that? Is this the only option you have? Or can you apply your mind and make a different choice? Maybe you couldn't maintain good posture while you looked at your phone for half an hour. Can you decide to stretch your back in a reasonable way for a minute afterwards? Can you stretch your back in a reasonable way for 10 seconds to help deal with all that time you just spent slumped over your phone? If you don't have a conception of a reasonable stretch in your mind, you can't. You might do a stretch, but when will you ever straighten out your back and give it a real stretch? If you're looking to get out of flipping between extremes, you're going to have to think instead of just acting. And that's what we explore on this channel, how to think in activity, how to reason about movements.